Hey all my peeps, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing and talking about AC Milan and their tactics. Um, the 4-2-3-1 system, of course. There are some new faces here. There are some faces that are missing, of course. But we're going to talk about the instructions that these players will have, the roles that they're going to have, um, and the system that Pioli plays at AC Milan. Of course, it helped them win the Serie A a few seasons ago, which was fantastic. I think it was the, like their first time in 11 years. Um, and AC Milan have been really good in that time. I mean, the last, what, two or three years, they've been phenomenal, and in fact, so good to them. Um, and of course, they got to the semi-finals of the Champions League, so a very good team, this, you know, a very good team. So just going through that team, of course, we've got Rafael Leal, the new number 10, of course, Brahim ended up leaving, going back to Real Madrid from his loan, um, and the number 10 was available. So Rafael Leal now has the number 10 jersey for AC Milan, which is fantastic, if you ask me. I'm a huge fan of jersey numbers and so on. Um, so you know what it does it really it looks really good on him. That's all I'm gonna say um, Up front though. We've got Olivier Giroud. We've got Pulisic a nice new face We've got Charles de Ketelier playing just in behind. We've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Calabria on the right hand side Bennett Sir and Hernandez on the left hand side. We've got Tomori and Kalulu um, As the two center backs and then of course we've got Mike Mignon now some more new faces We've got Okafor, Chiquese and Reiners all new to the team it will be very interesting to see what their roles are. I'm going to like more or less predict how they will play going forward. Um, but I think it's pretty much straight, straightforward how they will play. I mean, I don't know too much about Reiners, but I more or less know about Chiquese and Okafor. So going forward, we'll, we'll chat about that and, and discuss the instructions. Um, we also have Krunic, um, Tata, Sa Tata Rasanu. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know though. 37-year-old um, Romanian goalkeeper. Um, solid backup, that's all I can say about him. Um, we've got Florenzi and Kiar, and then on the, or on the reserves I should say, we've got Salamakas, um, Messias, Origi, Tior, um, Marante, Romero, Bellatore, and of course Udli. And then we've got Rebic, of course, who is slightly lower. Um, he is apparently going to Besiktas. I haven't moved him there just yet, I've just read that he is leaving um, and going there. So, you know, we've got the here we go from Fabrizio Romano, so I will be moving him sooner or later. So, you know, that is more or less the team going forward um so yeah just having a look at the formation and everything of course i modeled this formation and these tactics off of their 4-3-3 attacking approach um but you can just you know t take whatever formation you want and then just mold it into this one but basically starting from the back we've got a goalkeeper two center backs two wing backs of course we've got a left and a right wing back two dms one cam one strike and then of course two wingers just having a look at some of the tactics quickly, it is said to press on heavy touch, so you want your opposition to make the mistake, you want to win the ball high up the field of course, um, because of that mistake, and then of course it's a lot closer to the goal, leading to more goal scoring opportunities going forward. Now this press was often led by the left winger Rafael Leal, or potentially the striker, which was either a Zlatan or a more or less Olivier Giroud in this situation. Um, but maybe with the, the new signings of Jaquese and in this situation is Pulisic, maybe they'll have more or less of a, a, a role going forward, maybe pressing on the right hand side as well quite a bit. But yes, so those are the guys to instigate the press and then more or less the team follows on and presses higher up the field going forward. As for the width, of course, it is a naturally wide formation. Of course, you have your uh, wing backs there hugging the touchline. You have your wingers who are also quite wide as well. But in this situation, defensively, like I always say, you want your defense to more or less be very narrow so you can't get broken down so easily with like balls in, into half spaces and, and whatnot. So you don't want your opposition functioning in those spaces because once that starts happening, it's tickets. So in this situation, your your wing backs more or less become full backs. They become nice and close to the, the, the two center backs, of course, and your wingers, they more or less drop into the midfield and become wide midfielders, which is quite nice. It's a nice approach, nice and look. Um, defensively of course nice defensive shape but also if you're looking to counter attack your wingers are nice and close to your striker so it allows you to have interchanging passes of course you might send one of your wingers on a run they're both fast wingers in this situation and they can both counter attack quite well and potentially score you more goals as for the depth Pioli likes to play a, a mid block of course it's more or less an insurance policy if you ask me like he doesn't like to pack in his opposition into their own half and, and make sure that he's squeezing the life out of them because he's a very smart man, very pragmatic man, and we see this in Italian football. Pragmat pragmatism is favored over adventurous, right? 
So that's why the likes of Jose Mourinho functions better in Serie A than what he has been in the Premier League of like the last few years. Because he's not, he's, he would rather keep a clean sheet than um, score five goals. So in this situation, it's a very similar approach, pragmatic, nice, structurally sound and everything. You, you do have fast paced centre backs in this situation, but Pioli, he likes to know that it's just paced slightly deeper. There will be no ball that can manipulate you and get in behind you and make sure you are exposed defensively, of course. So that's the, the, the cause for the, the 60 and the, the mid block. As for the build-up play, it's set to a nice slow build-up. You have the likes of Olivier Giroud up front. He has not got that 90 pace. He's not going to run in behind like Rafa Leal all the time. He doesn't have the pace to burn. So you want to move the ball nicely. You want to maintain possession, most importantly, because Milan, they do like and favor the likes of retaining possession, making sure that they always have a higher position than the opposition. Obviously, not always, but more times than not, they will. Um, and having a slow build-up does allow your Olivier Giroud to have more of a focal point in the offense going forward um, to hit balls into him, play balls off of him, ping balls off of him I should say, um, as well as allow your goalkeeper to be more involved as well. Of course he is a sweeper keeper in this situation and it does allow him to help knit the offense going forward um, and he has a, a bigger role in building the play up from the back of course um, and through the final thirds as well. Um, as for your chance creation, it's set to forward runs. Now, when you have forwards like a Rafael Leal, like a Christian Pulisic, like an Olivier Giroud, you want them to be functioning in space. What this does is it creates space, it pulls the opposition, it stretches them out, creates half chances, half spaces, of course, for your midfield to function in. But also, it gets your forwards in the best possible positions for crosses in the box, of course. And speaking of which, um, the width is set to 50, it's a naturally wide formation, so you don't want it too wide because then it creates issues with your plays being too far apart when trying to knit the offense together. But speaking of which, the plays in the box, that's what I was trying to get to. It is set to seven, which is quite high, but it does allow for more players to be in the box, right? It allows for your offensive um, talents, like a Rafael Leal, like a Theo Hernandez, of course, who is an offensive talent going forward. Um, your Christian Pulisic's, your Charles de Ketelaers, of course. It allows them to function and be, you know, slightly shackleless in a way you know and un unchain the shackles um and let them flourish offensively um more bodies in the box equals more goal scoring opportunities and that's what the situation creates quite well and of course they are a fairly tall team i think polish is the, it, the 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 shortest player in the front line i mean charles de Ketelier and Giroud are both well over six feet tall i'm pretty sure rafa allows also over six feet tall and then i think maybe polish is just six foot or maybe slightly taller. I could be wrong, let me know down below, but it's a fairly tall front line. So you want to be firing those crosses into the, into the box. There are quite a few aerial um, challenges that can definitely score you lots of goals. Um, as for corners and free kicks, both sets of four. Um, goes without saying, it's a natural standard thing with my set of tactics as per always. So having a look at the instructions, of course, Mike Mignan, in my opinion, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, a few months ago, I would have said he was probably the best. He was probably better than Allison, but I think things have slightly changed. Allison is a better goalkeeper, um, but in this situation, he is one of the best in the world, 100% hands down. But he is said to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Like I mentioned earlier, you want him involved in the build-up play, knitting the offense together from the back and starting it slowly through the final thirds. Um, he is a great and brilliant sweeper keeper, and of course, he's also very aerially dominant, can control and command his box quite well. Very tall, I think he's what, six foot four, six foot five, fantastic with the ball at his feet. But of course, when you're the FIFA player, you are in control of these players more times than not. And because your fullbacks will be so high up the field, because they are essentially wingbacks, they're not fullbacks, they're not going to be dropping deep to come collect the ball. You need your passing to be quite accurate with Mike Mignan, as well as Tomori and Kalulu, because there's little to no defensive help um, from your fullbacks or your wingbacks in this situation. Um, so you need to be very accurate and very safe and savvy with your passing at the back because one wrong pass and it's a, <laughs> it's a howler from you. Um, but speaking of the two in front, um, they are set to their basic defensive and set of instructions, just the default stuff, you know, the good stuff. Then moving slightly out wider to your wing backs, they have slightly differing roles, of course. Uh, we've got Calabria who is set to join the attack and overlap. Now you want your... your well, you want in this situation to replicate Calabria's role in real life. He bombs on from the, the, the winger 
um, creating one two opportunities creating an overload on the right hand side and you always want your opposition fullback to be in a catch-22 phase where do I go with the runner in behind me or do I stick with the winger with the ball at his feet that can cut inside and shoot potentially um, and that's what this situation does for Calabria and Pulisic. Um, as for Ruben Loftus-Cheek he is set to cut passing lanes, balance attack, normal interceptions, cover the wing and then stick to position. Now compared to his counterpart in midfield of course Bennett Sir, who has a slightly differing role um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek is part of the, the double pivot, but he has more of a, a license to get forward, join the attack, join Charles de Ketelet, potentially knit the, the midfield play between Benetza and Charles de Ketelet quite well. Um, so he will be more of your box-to-box -box midfielder, the roaming midfielder in this situation. Um, as for Benetza, he more or less has the Sandro Tonali role, and even though they're not exactly the same player, I think he can fulfill this role in his own way. So. If you still have Sandro Tonali in the team, these are the exact set of instructions that you would need in order to have him as a functioning deep line playmaker. Um, but Bennett's uh, defensively offers a lot more. He is more, you know, clinical with his tackling abilities, with his um, defensive runs, picking up the opposition, cutting out passing lanes, of course. Um, but that is what his defensive behavior is set to cut out passing lanes, stay back while attacking. Normal interceptions, you don't want to like outwork him or anything like that cover the wing so he will drop into the fullback position from time to time um, when Theo Hernandez bombs on forward. Likewise with Ruben Loftus-Cheek when Calabria bombs on forward um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek will drop into that right back role from time to time but the another differing role that Benetzer has compared to Loftus-Cheek is he will be the deep line playmaker so he will sometimes drop in between the two centre backs collect the ball from the the goalkeeper knit the play going forward and drive it on into the midfield as well. Um, he's not exactly going to spray you 50 or 60 yard passes like Cassandra Tonali can, but he is capable of, you know, making, dropping the shoulder, making the run, charging into the midfield, creating overloads in other areas, um, and then laying the ball off um, to the, the offensive players going forward. As for him though, he, his instructions which slightly differ from Calabria, he is said to join the attack and have a mixed attack. Um, so you're not going to see him constantly bombing on around or um, overlapping the likes of Leal. You want him as a, you know, a jack of all trades. He can overlap, he can invert, but mainly I want him to have that role because a few seasons ago we saw him, I think it was against Inter Milan even, he picked up the ball as a left back and he like made this crazy Maisie-esque run as a, more or less as a striker and then he shot and he scored and he ended up scoring one of the goals of the season. Um, and you don't want to take that away from him because he is such an offensively talented player. Um, and that's more or less why I've gone with a, a mixed attack because you do want him to make the overlapping runs But you also want him to join up with the midfield um, On certain occasions and more or less create like a midfield four with having like a, a hybrid wide left midfielder um, And Theo Hernandez does a very very good job with fulfilling this role um, And then slightly forward now and still in the midfield But slightly forward the number 10 role Charles the Ketelet in this situation um, He is said to come back on defense get into the box um, stick to position and have normal inter interceptions on. Now, more or less how I see Charles de Ketelet, similar to how some people see the likes of Kai Havertz, he's not exactly a number 10, but he's not exactly a striker just yet. He's more or less maturing and developing into that role. And what this role does for him, yes, he's the number 10. He's got great eyes for, for the playmaking ability, but eventually he will move slightly forward and become a number nine. Um, but you want him to be more or less the secondary striker running off the shoulder of Giroud, linking a play with Giroud, of course, um, and that's what this role can do for him. You, so you want him to drop into the midfield um, in, in certain moments, collect the ball, um, spray out um, balls left and right, but you also want him to try and create overloads in the midfield, um, and he does that quite well. Um, and then, of course, get into the box, very natural. He's a tall player. You want him to get onto the end of crosses, heading home, certain goals for you. But sticking to position is, is pivotal. You don't want him to drift wide and potentially cross the ball because you need him in the box to cross the ball. You want your fullbacks or your wingers to cross the ball. You don't need him anywhere near those wide areas. You need him to function quite well between the midfield, the opposition's midfield and their defense. So as for Christian Pulisic, his instructions are for a natural winger, which he very much is. Um, come back on defense, stay wide, get in behind, get into the box and of course normal interceptions. You want him to be out wide creating 1v1 situations with the opposition's fullback. Um, you also want him to come back on defense and help out Calabria who will be bombing on forward. Same with Rafael Leal, they have more or less the similar instructions for that. But you also want him to get in behind, stretch the opposition, create half spaces for the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Charles de Ketelet, 
Olivier Giroud to function and work with. And then, of course, you want him to make diagonal runs into the box for those potential crosses that are fired in from the left-hand side. And, of course, the more people you have in the box, that's why it's set to seven, the more goal-scoring opportunities you create for yourself going forward. Now, as for Rafael Leal, we have him set to come back on defense, very similar to Christian Pulisic. We have him set to stay wide, but this time, support runs, slightly different. You don't just want him running in behind like Christian Pulisic. You want him to come deep, collect the ball, and make driving runs at the opposition's fullback, creating chaos and havoc um, for the opposition, because they'll constantly be backpedaling, and then it just creates runs for others to run into, um, and spaces for others to run into, I should say. Um, but also you can then also have him as a guy who gets him behind, who manipulates that space in behind with his electric pace going forward. Um, and also he's he's not just a, a one-trick pony, he can do multiple things. And that's more or less what this balance supports um, on the support runs does for him because it more or less shows off his offensive talents going forward. And you want Leao to be the, the offensive star of this team. Um, and then of course support on crosses is given to the box. You want him making diagonal runs as well. Um, being a threat offensively in the box and then not normal interceptions is on and then finally we will end off the instructions with Olivier Giroud he is said to stay central and be a target man of course it goes without saying he's not the fastest of players but he is more or less a battering ram of a striker and he can cause a lot of problems for the opposition aerially of course physically of course loves to back into players get the ball to feet and then ping balls off of him um, for players running into the spaces um, that are created by simply him just backing into the, the, the center backs of the opposition and just creating havoc. Um, and then of course, here's your this forward focal points. So you don't want him tracking back all the time because one stamina is a big issue with Olivier Giroud. Uh, but more importantly, like I mentioned earlier, you want to be able to ping balls off of him and then make runs. Um, and he does such a good job at that, that him staying forward, he can hold the ball up, hold the play up and then other players can run off of that and that's more or less how counter-attacks can happen and begin um so yes you know fantastic set of instructions that get the best out of olivier giroud now as for your your three new signings in the situation that are on the bench as for okafor i don't imagine him being a target man i mean maybe as he progresses and gets older he might become that but at 23 years of age he's got loads of pace he's got a 93 pace in fifa 23 so you more or less change the target man approach to getting behind and then it just changes this offense going forward quite a lot because you have three players that are incredibly quick, incredibly pacey, that can pick the ball up, drive at the opposition, get in behind the opposition. So it does open and unlock this like this offense going forward a little bit more. Um, so that that's more or less what I would imagine his instructions would be. As for Samuel Chukwesi, I would imagine he would have the same instructions as Pulisic or maybe even a Rafael Leao. You don't always want him to use his pace and burn out the, the opposition defensively by just consistently getting him behind. He is quite a talent on the ball, loves to dribble as well. So you might want him to have the, the Rafael Leao instructions where he drops deep, collects the ball and runs at the opposition with the ball at his feet. Um, and like I say, it creates havoc with the electric pace the, the dribbling abilities of course and then as for Reinders I don't really know that much about him um, I know he was at, what at Feyenoord I think um, but I would imagine putting him in the Ruben Loftus cheek role would probably get the best out of him um, so yeah that's pretty much all I have to say about him I hope you have enjoyed this video if you have smash the like button please I would absolutely appreciate it um, subscribe if you are new we do videos like this all the time we do creation videos of course creating faces um, creating tactics, individual player tactics from time to time. So if this is more or less a channel that you would come back to, please just subscribe. It would be fantastic for me, fantastic for you. And I can promise you the best quality is right here on the channel. So until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.